in Amman and Ahar, Augustan Vig, Augustan Spirit Nave. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On behalf of the Coil family, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning, this beautiful morning, as we gather here to celebrate the funeral mass for Anne Coyle, Lace of Coriel. And over the past number of days, many prayers have been offered for Anne. But this is the single greatest prayer that we have. The Eucharist is always central to our funeral celebrations, the funeral mass. And on my own behalf, on behalf of Father Michael Breslin, who joins me in this concelebrated Mass, I would like to extend our very deepest sympathy <coughs> to Anne's sons, Kieran and Brian, to her daughters, Irene, Fiona, Ina, Noel, Idel, Anya and Neve, to her daughters-in-law, Mary and Denise, her sons-in-law, Eddie, Morris, Noel, Gary, Paddy and Kidding to her 19 grandchildren, to her brothers Frank and Brian, her sisters Mary and Bridie, to her brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, nephews and nieces, and all who mourn her death. In this Mass we thank God for her life, and we pray now that she is reunited with her husband Eamon, who only predeceased her very recently and her son, Niall, died in 2010. We pray that they are all now reunited in the happiness of heaven. And we begin our Mass with the presentation of symbolic gifts, and Noel is now going to introduce the uh, symbolic gifts. And each of the gifts in different ways symbolize the life of Mary. And you can sit down for this part of our Mass. <laughs> Roisin brings up Anne's nursing photo and badge to symbolize her years in the nursing vocation her dedication to her career and caring for others throughout her life was second to none and is now carried on by her daughter and granddaughter. Anne and Declan bring up a book and a pack of cards. Anne loved reading and even from a young age would always have a book in her hand. She loved her card games and attended the local card drive for many years. Anya brings up a family photo. Anne came from a family of 10 and then went on to rear 10 kids of her own. Family was always very important to her and she loved the Sunday afternoons when everyone was around her. Avin brings up a garden plant. Anne was an avid gardener. She spent many hours in her garden and often only came in from it when it was dark outside. Leisha brings up a crucifix belonging to Anne's brother, Father Dennis, to symbolize her devotion to her faith. She rarely missed mass and has installed her faith in her family. Ina brings up brown soda bread. Anne spent endless hours baking and was famous for her brown bread. Her bread was enjoyed by so many people and nobody ever left the house hungry. These are some of the symbolic gifts, representation of Anne's life. And we bring all of them into this Mass as we now thank God for her life and 
the different things that symbolize, are symbolized here in the gifts brought to the altar. So first of all, then let us acknowledge as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass for Anne, let us for a moment acknowledge our own struggles in life, our frailties, our need for God's mercy and forgiveness as we now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. I hear in a gentrocra, a creost gentrocra, a hear in a gentrocra. And let us pray. O God, glory of believers and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of your Son, we are redeemed. Have mercy on Anne and make her worthy to share the joys of paradise, for she believed in the resurrection of the dead. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We're now going to listen to God's Word and the readings day, specially chosen by the family because they're, and in different ways reflect the, their own feelings and their hope for Anne in eternal salvation. And there's a great note of hope in this reading, first reading proclaimed by Irene, uh, remind us that the souls of the virtuous are in the hand of God and no torment shall ever touch them. In other words, the death is not the final end there is a future beyond this world that none of us will be able to understand without faith in a merciful God. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died and their departure was thought to be a disaster and they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
and the second reading today proclaimed by Neve. And in this reading we remind that life is not all plain sailing. There are twists and turns in everybody's life. There are choppy waters to be crossed, hills to be climbed. There are many times when we are tried and tested, our faith, our patience, our trust, our hope, our goodwill. Everything that is good is often put to the ultimate test. Sadly, some seem to get a harder deal in life than others. But then we never know the suffering of some because it's not always visible or known to the human eye. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. James. You will always have your trials, but when they come, try to treat them as a happy privilege. You understand that your faith is only put to the test to make you patient, but patience too is to have its practical results so that you will become fully developed, complete, with nothing missing. Happy the person who stands firm when trials come. They have proved themselves and will win the prize of life. The crown that the Lord has promised to those who love him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. taken from John's Gospel and in this Gospel we have a very intimate moment Jesus speaking from the cross and he gives this gives us an, an account of as that a very intimate moment between where Jesus is speaking from the cross to his mo- the disciple he most confided in and he's telling him to look after his mother even in the hour of death Jesus was thinking of others especially his mother The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, John, standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The Gospel of the Lord. It is less than four months ago since we gathered in this church for the funeral mass of Amen. And it's sad once again that we come together so soon mourning the death of Anne, his devoted wife of 53 years. It's very difficult for you, their family, to lose both parents and grandparents so quickly and in such short succession of time. As they were inseparable in life, our prayer today is that they will be forever together in heaven. As priests, when speaking to a couple on their wedding day, we often pray that their love for one another will grow not only in this life, but flow into eternity. Amen and Anne's love for one another 
was without doubt a non-breakable bond. They lived for one another in life. And our prayer today is that their love for one another will bond them forever in eternity. The month of November is a time of the year that stirs so much emotion, memory, sadness, and a deep sense of longing for those that have been so much part of our life and living. These winter months of hibernation, fallen leaves, shorter days, longer nights, remind us of the transition of life. Of life. And we get reminders of the passage of time throughout our lives. Every morning, we see ourselves emerging from the darkness of night. Even the leaves falling from the trees, preparing for the new life of spring, is a stark reminder of the transition of life, of death to life. There are times in all of our lives when we reach the autumn of life, when the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Every time we gather to celebrate a funeral mass it should prompt all of us to ponder on why we're in this world, the purpose of our existence, the meaning of life, death and resurrection, and the importance of faith in giving meaning and purpose to our life. And whilst we're aware of the fragility and the finality of life, as people of faith, we also believe in our immortality. We have come here this morning because we believe in the resurrection of the dead. We believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. And it is our fervent belief that we as faithful people of God on earth will be one day reunited with those we have loved and those who have loved us. Today we gather as family, neighbours and dear friends of Anne in prayerful reflection as we recall her 77 years of life, cherishing the memories of the past and remembering the story that was her life. We surround her today with our love and our prayers as we commend her soul to the loving mercy and care of God. We unite in solidarity with your family as you mourn the death of your mother, your mother-in-law, your granny, your sister, your sister-in-law, your aunt, your cousin, your neighbour, and dear friend. Today, you thank God for everything that she meant to you as a good mother and granny, for all the graces and blessings that she brought to your lives, her example of lived faith, the love and happiness she brought, the sacrifices she bore, and how she influenced your lives by the way she lived her own. While there is inevitable sadness, there is also a sense of relief for Anne as she is freed from all her sickness and suffering. She has completed her life on earth and our prayer is that all that she did and all that she aspired to do in this world would be fully realized for her now in the fullness of life. Anne died on last Monday morning in the place dearest to her heart, her beloved home of Coriel, where she had spent the last 53 years, surrounded by so much care and love from you, our devoted family. I know each of you have many precious memories of her life, and particularly of the time that you spent 
caring for her in the latter days and hours of her life. They were blessed and cherished moments that will remain with you for years to come. It was an opportunity too for you to express your love and appreciation to someone who did so much for you in life. Anne was born on the 5th of April 1945 to Dennis and Mary Daly near Denver in the town of Roscommon. She was the fifth in a family of ten, predeceased by her four brothers and one sister, and survived by her brothers Frank and Brian, and her sisters Mary and Bridey. Baptised in April 1945 in the Sacred Heart Church, Roscommon, she spent her childhood and early teenage years in Roscommon, educated at the local primary, Convent of Mercy Primary and Secondary School. She pursued a career in nursing and trained in Liverpool, where she graduated as a qualified nurse. She worked for a time in Walton Hospital, Liverpool, before returning to continue her nursing profession, initially in Roscommon Hospital, subsequently in the Sacred Heart Home, and for a time on the ambulance service. In 1969, she married Eamon, and for 53 years they were devoted husband and wife, until Eamon's recent death on the 22nd of July this year. She was a devoted and loving mother to you, Irene and Kieran, to Ina and Fiona, Noel and Brian, Adele, Anya and Neve, and Niall, who sadly died in 2010. She had a special place too for you, her sons-in-law and daughters-in-law, who quickly became part of the family. But her pride and joy was her 19 grandchildren. She was happiest when you were around her. She was a loving mother and grandmother to all of you, and each one of you was important to her. But her heart was broken in January 9, 2010, following the tragic death of Niall. This was a dark time for all of you, and neither she nor Eamon ever were the same afterwards. It's one of the most difficult times, it was one of the most difficult times in your lives, and indeed for the wider parish community. It brought so much pain and sadness to what was a very happy and loving family. Our prayer today is that all three are reunited in the happiness of heaven. Anne gave of herself selflessly to each of you. She worked extremely hard to ensure you got every opportunity in life. Despite her large family, she had a place at the family table to feed whoever called, as we heard in that uh, introduction of the Simba Bonnie Gibbs. Indeed, as I said at Eamon's funeral, the coil house was always an open house. There was always hospitality, care and nourishing food. There was such hosp they were such hospitable people and the younger generation always relished and special recipes and expert cooking. She had many lovable qualities and so many benefited from her nursing career, especially the sick and the elderly. I have no doubt that she supported many in the crisis and latter years of life and, and literally nourished some to the frontiers of eternity. Anne was always a worker. She wasn't for sitting down. She was a no-nonsense person too, always straight to the point. We knew she had the good of people at heart and was never judgmental in her comments or observations. The real test of one's character is the ability to be able to say the difficult things when it would be much easier to avoid the issue. Anne had the courage always to speak her mind and would never take no for an answer. While she was very busy rearing her family 
and working in the Sacred Heart Home, she never forgot the welfare of her local and wider community. She had vision and foresight and always looked ahead of what might be in the best interest. Over many years, she campaigned to the Hospital Action Committee to prevent the threatened closure of Roscommon County Hospital. As a parent and representative on the Board of Management of Tisrara School, she articulated the parents' views at board level and did everything in her remit to promote the education welfare of the children of the school. She, she was adventurous too and loved travelling and you could meet her in the strangest of places as I did on one occasion when I thought nobody around knew where I was. <laughs> she was a big fan of sport and watched with delight your skillful manoeuvres on the playing field and particularly playing hurling and camogie and football. She was justifiably proud of all your many achievements on the sports field. The large crowd that filed past her coffin and the guards of honour and the beautiful tributes paid to her are all an indication of the highest esteem she was held. She has enriched this faith community in many ways, especially through her example of faith. The church was special to her. Um, and, and she came here on so many occasions to offer her humble worship to God in the Eucharist. Going to Mass and saying her prayers were all too important to be neglected or omitted. She clearly understood the importance of faith and lived it so practically. I have no doubt that her faith gave her much comfort and strength in coping with her illness. The best tribute we can pay her now is to live and cherish what was important in her life and especially her faith. She was conscious too of her faults and failings and would want us to pray that God will be merciful to her for anything that she did or failed to do during her life. I know you will miss her so much, especially after all those years together. She has been central to your life and left you a precious legacy of how you should live your own life. Every time that Anne came to this church for Mass, she prayed those words of the Creed, and I quote, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our prayer today is that these words are now fully realized for her and that she is sharing in the fullness of resurrected life. We will never make sense of death unless we believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Every funeral mass should remind us that we're in this world for a time, but we mustn't be afraid of the future, but rather take Christ at his word when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if they die, will live. Let these words be our consolation and hope this day. Anne has experienced both the joyful and sorrowful mysteries of life. May she now enjoy the glorious mysteries of eternal life. May the kind-hearted and generous spirit of Anne live on and may her soul rest in peace. Banu J. or Annam Jesus. We now have the prayers of the faithful. So we stand for the prayers of the faithful. And Anne's grandchildren will now lead us in prayer. And having listened to God's word, we are now, and having reflected on Anne's life, let us now pray. Lord, Lord, we pray that Anne is at peace. We entrust her to your merciful and loving care. She was spe special to all of us in this life. Now that she is freed from all the cares and sufferings of this world, give her happiness forever in he heaven. Lord, hear us. Amen. 
We thank God for the many people who were inspired by the kind and caring life of Anne. May her generous spirit live on and may we continue to keep alive the value and, de and ideals she embodied and lived in her life. May all the good she did in this world be rewarded with eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are grieving for Anne especially, her sons, Kieran and Brian, her daughters, Irene, Fiona, Ina, Noel, Adele, Anya and Neve, <coughs> her brothers, Frank and Brian, her sisters, Mary and Bridie, her 19 grandchildren, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, sisters-in-law, brothers-in-law, nieces, nephews, relatives and friends. May the Lord comfort all of us in our sorrow and give us hope and consolation in our grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember with grateful thanks all those in the pastoral, medical and caring professions who gave Anne such wonderful care and attention, in particular Roscommon University Hospital, Roscommon Palliative Care Team, and especially her family who lovingly supported her throughout the latter years of her life. May the Lord reward all of you for your endless care and kindness. Lord, hear us. We acknowledge with the much appreciation the support and friendships of our neighbours and many friends who befriended Anne and have given us so much support and practical help in our grief. May the Lord reward all of you for your thoughtful care and grateful kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We thank you for the gift of life and for the many ways we inspire and influence goodness in each other. Help us to be truly grateful for what we have, who we are, and for what we can do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, lay your healing hands on all who are sick at this time, especially those struggling with terminal and debilitating illnesses. We remember those, to those in third world countries who have little or no access to medical care. May we do what we can do to ensure they receive the help and care they need. Lord, hear us. We pray also on this day, especially Anne's husband, Eamon, her son, Niall, parents, D Dennis and Mary, and all the deceased members of the Coyle, Daly and Denver families. May they rest in eternal peace of heaven. Lord, hear us. People living and dead to the care of Mary, our mother, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Just for a moment, we'll pause now as we pray in silence. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, you are the creator and sustainer of all life. You love us with a love which is beyond all we could ever hope for or imagine. You're attentive to every need before we know them ourselves. Look upon us, your people, and look kindly on Anne and Eamon and Niall and all for whom we've prayed here today through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now bring to the altar the gifts of bread and wine. And these gifts in this Mass will be transubstantiated in the body and blood of Christ. And as they're changed, we pray that our lives too will be transformed into the likeness of Christ.
pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Anne may be taken up into glory with your Son in his great mystery of love. We are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your altar, Lord, 
confirm us in unity so that together with Francis our Pope, Kevin our Bishop, the clergy, the religious and your entire people as we walk your ways with faith and hope we may strive to bring joy and trust and peace into the world. Remember Anne and Eamon and Niall and all the deceased members of the Coil and the Daly families who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us on our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our life on earth is a journey of faith, beginning for each of us at our baptism, and through our faithfulness to God will one day lead us to eternal life. As we continue that journey of faith, let us renew our faith and our hope in God the Father, the creator and sustainer of all life, as we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And we just pause for a moment as we now pray for peace, particularly in a world where there can be so much violence, so much hatred, so much hurt and pain. We pray today particularly for peace, peace in the wider world, within communities, within family life, within ourselves. And today we pray especially for the eternal peace of Anne. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Thank you.
Fiona will now lead the communion reflection. A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. It broke our hearts to see you go. God only takes the best. They say that memories are golden. Well, maybe that is true, but we never wanted memories. We only wanted you. Your life was love and labor, your love for your family true. You did your best for all of us, and we will always remember you. We sat beside your bedside. Our hearts were crushed and sore. We did our best. We did our duty to the end, till we could do no more. In tears, we watched you sinking. We watched you fade away. And though our hearts were breaking, we knew you could not stay. Our lips cannot speak how we loved you. Our hearts cannot tell what to say. But God only knows how we miss you in our home that is lonely today. Thanks, Fiona. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Anne, for whom we have celebrated this Eucharist, may pass over to a dwelling place of eternal light and peace through Christ our Lord. And just before the final commendation, on behalf of the Coyne family, to thank all of you for your prayerful presence here today and for all the people who have helped in so many ways over the past number of days and, and weeks and a special word of thanks to the people who befriended Anne in life and for all the different ways that she enriched this faith community we're so grateful to Anne because she certainly in her own way made this parish all more special through her presence and through the life that she lived. And our prayer today is that she is now at peace with Amen and Nile in her eternal home in heaven. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, that petulant light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gomani jiro hokter shiv ahar makok spirit nave. We now have the final commendation, so we stand for the final commendation. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Anne. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Trusting in God, we have prayed here together for Anne. And now we come to the last farewell. 
There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Anne again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to our aid, come to meet her, angels of the Lord, if her soul presented to God the Most High. May Christ, who has called you and take you to himself, may angels lead you to Abraham's side. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Anne, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Anne and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and Anne forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in peace now let us take Anne to Tisrara Cemetery be buried alongside her husband Amon and her son Nile.
Yes.